Nigeria's ruling party, the All Progressive Congress APC, has announced the postponement of the inauguration of its presidential campaign council to accommodate more members. In a statement issued on Monday night by the Director General of the campaign and the Governor of Plateau State, Simon Lalong, the uh, inauguration has been postponed indefinitely to allow the expansion of the list. Recall that the APC Presidential Campaign Council earlier released a 422-man list of power brokers as members of the council, which excluded some notable leaders of the ruling party. This development raised a lot of dust as clashes ensued over the Muslim-Muslim ticket of the party. Well, joining us to discuss and break this down is Bjordan Shomi, a political analyst. Thank you so much, Mr. Shomi, for joining us. It's my pleasure. Great. Um, let's start by the most conspicuous mistake, I'd like to call it, um, for the Presidential um, Campaign Council, which was a, the inclusion of the name of a People's Democratic Party member on that list. What exactly do you think that was? A fluke or a mistake or maybe something that has been in the works? Well, um, it's quite... Um, very, very clear that there's something else. I don't necessarily think that the names of the members of PBD, uh, particularly Senator Chief Maroke Namani, that was included, would have been done in error. Mm. Uh, it may be because some other discussions were taking place behind the scene, and we are likely, possibly, going to see some input job in Chief. It's just a matter of waiting for when that will happen. But they had to include them from the beginning as part of the planning. That's one possibility. The other possibility is the fact that, uh, indeed, there could have been an error, which the, uh, the, the chances, you know, is, uh, the, the, the risk of an error is very slim. Um, even the personality involved, uh, particularly, I would repeat again, um, so the way I see it is we are beginning to see uh, things unfolding. We saw what happened, what has been going on with the uh, Muslim Muslim ticket. We also seen what has been going on with uh, the division in PDP, the challenge to uh, IUC leadership. So, politics is the era of politicking. Politicians do that um, before the campaign starts. Now, on the campaign start, we'll begin to see uh, what are the facts of what is going on. There are people that will see John Chief, some who claim the Things and uh, therefore they've got to go. Some will stay within the party and then, you know, uh, create uh, dissenting voices. It's going to be like that. Uh, we have the same thing going on in uh, what's going on in PDP is also going on in APC. We have uh, uh, the likes of uh, Babache Lawal, Nogara, also making their own noises. So I don't think it's uh, something extraordinary. I think it's part of the politicking in getting ready. Uh, but, I, I mean, when, when conversations were, are being had as to the preparedness of political parties, especially the ruling party, the APC, one would think that this would have been a done deal, being that um, uh, they did not necessarily have the kind of crisis that the PDP is facing right now, I suppose, uh, uh, you know, concerning a Muslim, Muslim tickets. I mean, that is just a group of people who are saying, well, we do not necessarily think that this ticket is fair, even though it's already a done deal. Um, but then, couldn't this have been ready, being that tomorrow is the day that the ban is lifted on campaigns? And one would have thought that this would have been something that would be announced immediately, as opposed to uh, the indefinite um, cancellation of you know, that particular event. So again, what is, is to, who's to say that the APC is really ready? I like the fact that you've said that, oh, well, the, the problem, these problems are teething problems. They happen all the time. But for an election that is this close, too close to call, or would, might be too close to call, shouldn't the ruling party be seen to be ready? Yes. Part of the readiness is what people tend to be on readiness. You know, it's not ill-prepared because the campaign has not started. So it's not ill prepared. The unreadiness starts from the angle of uh, uh, politicians trying to win more people to their side. You see in the two parties, there were people moving. 
those who lost out on tickets you know, for Senate, House of Reps, will normally jump ship and see whether they could uh, uh, try and contest to another party. Even if they won't win, but to actually be a spoiler, then you also have those who genuinely will not want to lose out of power. If they perceive, say for instance, the ruling party is likely going to retain the power, you will see some people wanting to jump ship and to join them. They want to be, you know, join the winning bandwagon. Then you have those who are determined, uh, diehard, who feel more principled or have ideological uh, dimension to their own perspective. You are likely going to see them also maintaining their own position. The most important thing is, I don't think this is about preparedness. Even as campaign keeps going on, you still see some of some people jumping ship. They will still continue to hold more people to their side. The way politicians view this is that the more the merrier. They don't see it as a sign of unpreparedness. If need be, they will add someone else, you know, to to to, to, to the campaign again in the midst of the campaign. Mm -hmm. If you look at what happened in PDP, you will notice that the rate, the 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 former chairman POC that stepped down just less than some weeks ago, less than a month ago, has actually been made to join the campaign. So they will continue to reconfigure, configure and reconfigure the campaign tree until they make sure that they are well spread and they have people who are able to deliver the vote. So that's the way. It's not about not being prepared. It's about, you know, continue to strategize, continue to see how they can australate and win more people to their side. That's the way they see it, and that's the way I see it in all honesty. Let's talk about um, the Northern Elders Forum, who have put out a statement saying, um, through its um, secretary uh, or spokesperson, um, uh, Hakim Baba Ahmed, he did say something in the lines of that they're yet to posture towards the person that they want to throw their weight behind as a forum. And they, he did say that, they, that whoever they pick would be physically sound, mentally sound, and otherwise sound. And they mentioned other things that would characterize who they will throw their weight behind and of, uh, finally vote for. Again, let's talk about the Afeni Fere who have thrown their weight behind, well, some gentlemen within the Afeni Fere, some chieftains, Chifolu Falaye, Paya Debanjo, who have said that well, they 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 rather vote for the Labour Party for reasons, um, you know, they, they have clearly stated. Uh, how does this also play to the APC presidential candidates' favour or disfavour? Yes, when you look at um, the Northern Elders Forum, I think that is unique. It's part of arrogance, in my viewpoint, when the an unelected leadership, Northern Elders Forum, would they meet a uh, speech that they have to uh, uh, interview, interrogate all the candidates before they can make up, you know, their mind on who to vote for. There is nothing wrong in looking at the debates, you know, looking at um, the manifesto, and then see how people explain, or the, uh, the aspirants explain how they could implement them, there's nothing wrong with that. But to say, to turn themselves into a media or into a democratic institution where you have to scrutinize, you know, the programs and perspectives, you know, of those aspiring, uh, I don't think that is right. It might be a smash of arrogance. They think they speak for the North, they decide for the North. I don't see the North as monolithic uh, in that sense. I, I cannot see how the Northern Elders Forum will speak for Plato or uh, Benue State. I cannot even see how they will speak for uh, for Boronu State or Yobe State. So, therefore, uh, the way this thing plays out is again about negotiating. And that's what I think they intend to do, to negotiate on collective interest, what they perceive to be the collective interest of the North, and see who can they push or hold all the three of them responsible for what they think are their own collective interests. It is not about the national interest, in my viewpoint. Um, now, over to the Afeni Fere. Go ahead. Beg your pardon? Go ahead. Over to, 
uh, on the affair ferry angle also, this is also another unelected dictatorship. Who gave the who gave the leadership of Afeni Terry the sole right to decide the fate of the Southwest? That is one. Now that is not even the case. You have the acting national leader of Afeni Terry, my respected Baba Adibanjo, you know, taking a position on behalf of the Afeni Terry as an organization. I don't believe all Afeni Terry members were consulted on this and I stand to be challenged and I know exactly what I'm talking about and therefore in my view Papa Yuadi Banjo is only speaking for himself. He's not speaking for the Afeni Ferry as a rule. There are so many groups in Yoruba land. The idea of coming up with Oani Ferry and all that uh, for me is a um, short of um, uh, I, I will short stop of saying political prostitution in the sense that this issue of handshake across the Niger, you know, has been an agenda which many people pursued, including I myself. But then, you pursue it only to a point where you agreed on agenda. It is not about choosing a leadership or not choosing a leadership for a country. When the handshake across the Niger uh, program started, I remember the late Inka Odumaki, uh, they so rarely dressed in peace. I and some others were fully involved. We went to Enugu, we went to Middle Belt and other places. Now, the whole idea, you know, was around, you know, ensuring that we have a united people. We heal the wounds of the past, of the civil war. It is not about endorsing or picking a leadership. The whole idea of the handshake across Niger, you know, is also about uh, fighting for restructuring. And in my view, endorsing one candidate or the other is not part of that agenda. So, as far as I can see, it, the Ohani Ferry, whether it's Afeni Ferry and Ohani Z, are now on a different program, different from the agenda, you know, uh, which uh, we all did set out to achieve. It is not about restructuring, in my view, and it is not about the unity and healing the wounds of the people. This is about power, strictly about power, and people are positioning, you know, themselves uh, one way or the other, either for Jinungu, uh, Atiku, or for Obi, that is exactly what is going on. It is partisan in nature, and Afef Nifere is not supposed to be. It's supposed to be a social cultural organization representing the interest of all the Yoruba people. Let's, let me take you on some of the things that you've said, especially about the Northern Elders Forum. Um, yes, you might be right that they do not necessarily, necessarily um, have the vote of every person in the North. But these are people who have been speaking for the North. These are people who have cried out on behalf of the North, um, whether it, in terms of insecurity, um, the abandonment of government and leadership, um, the fact that they have been getting the short end of the stick, etc., etc. So why can't they, whether they be 10, 5, or 2 people, say, well, this is what we want. We want to be able to probe we want to be able to see, we want to be able to be certain that this person who's coming to us wanting our votes is worthy of it. What's wrong with that? Um, I mean, whether they, whether they are uh, elected or not, they're also, ca you know, voters. They have a right to vote. And they're saying, if our people have been getting the short end of the stick and we've been getting all of this, you know, from the past administrations, now we are willing to make sure that we give our people uh, some opportunity to scrutinize these leaders. What's wrong with that? Because I'm querying why you're saying that it's not their place to do it. But then these are elders representing these areas. Why can't they posture? Yes. Um, the Northern Elders Forum is a group, like other groups in the country. What we're saying is, is tantamount to say, Afeni Ferry wants to call all the candidates to come and address them and convince them um, before they can make up their mind on who to, to back or not to back. It's tantamount to say, you know, wants to do the same thing. And it is the same right, the civil society organizations would have to say yes before we can endorse any candidate or support any candidate. But, you is, need but isn't to that the case for, for every But isn't that the case for every voter? Does every candidate not have to, one way or the other, 
give you a reason to vote for them, would you not scrutinize them? Would you not at least try to ask questions? And that's why there are opportunities for these debates, etc., etc. But if they, as a group, are saying, we want to see you as a candidate, this is what we want, we want to question you and scrutinize you, what's wrong with that? Look, absolutely. Every voter, whether as a group or as individuals, have a right to examine the manifesto of political parties. They even have a right to ask questions. What I am saying that marks of political arrogance is when you now choose to say that they must appear before you, right? And particularly when campaign is going to start. That will distract them. That group is a minority group of individuals, is not representative of the majority of the people in Nigeria. And of course, that is why I said, why do they think they are more special than other groups uh, in the country? Do not forget that they had always been partisan. In 2014-15, they supported the candidacy of President Buhari, and he won the election. In 2018-19, they supported the candidacy of uh, Atiku Akubaka, and he lost the election. And therefore, there is no guarantee that they backing a candidate as a group or not will determine the fate of the election. No. So therefore, it is far better for organized sectors, you know, like the OPS, uh, organized private sector, like the media, you know, to conduct such a, a, a debate. When you come to the level of a group, say, claiming I represent uh, the Ohana Zindiko, except you people appear before us, will not make up our mind and will not advise our people on who to vote for. That's okay. where the political arrogance is. If you look at what Ohana Zindiko has been saying, or Afeni uh, Ferry, they have never specifically mentioned the fact that we will not tell our people who to vote for. Okay. Whereas the evidence that are found did not support whatever they are pretending, the power they pretend to, uh, they have. You know, in terms of influencing the voters. It didn't work in 2019. They back at it. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you. Beyond the show me is a veteran journalist, by the way, and also a political analyst. Always a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. All right. And that's the show tonight. We will be back tomorrow, 7 p.m. on Plus Politics. We will be talking for development as, of course, the ban is being lifted on campaigns. I, I advise every Nigerian... Listen and listen again. Do not be in a hurry to make a choice. And don't forget, your PVCs are ready. If you have start, if you had um, registered before uh, January, you can go and get your PVCs. But if you registered between July uh, and August, uh, you will be your PVC will be ready sometime in October and November. Don't forget, go get your PVC because that is your only pass to making sure that you have good governance. I am Mary Anacone. Have a good evening.